what we've noticed in our practice is a lot of kids, you know, since they're spending a lot of time with these devices, they're not getting enough sleep. And that's obviously affecting the hormonal production, specifically testosterone. And Doc is seeing younger and younger men with low T. And it's almost, you know, like, what do you do in that case? Do you treat a 20 year old with hormones or do you not? Yeah. Maybe you can add on to this. Well, so I, I think the important thing for me, and you know, for you, you see a lot of patients with cancer, with advanced diseases. We tend to see a lot of patients who are not optimal and who are not sick, mm -hmm. but not their best. Yeah. And our, what we like to call ourselves with an optimization specialty um, um, medicine, uh, we deal with sick people also, but our average patient is somebody who's not doing well, not feeling great, not optimized, whether that's at work, at home, in the bedroom, um, in his mind, so, and we help them with this. And what we notice is, uh, as I was saying, testosterone is so important for men. That's what determines who you are, who you are how you act in the world, and how you, your ambition, your zest for life. And we're seeing now so many patients who are coming in in their 20s, in their early 30s, with levels in the 300 free testosterone in the single digits, yep. and all the health consequences that happen from this, and not only health consequences, personality consequences, depression, anxiety, not achieving. We're seeing now there's a gap that where young women are overachieving and young men, young men are underachieving. So, um, you know, statistics are very strong on this. More girls are graduating from graduate school, from college, even from medicine, from traditionally things that men used to do. And we see men's performances are going down. To me, I link that a lot to testosterone. It's not the only thing. So what's your view of this, what I call this epidemic of low testosterone that we're seeing? And what's your view on testosterone replacement for the right patient? Because there are still a lot of misconceptions and myths. No, I think it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. We test, I mean, we test hormones on everybody. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're trying to handle the toxicity thing. And we're also trying to handle the deficiency thing. Exactly. So it's very hard to get somebody better. I mean, maybe in a year, if you detox them and optimize their nutrition, you might get their testosterone from 300 to 600. Yeah. But, but I can't wait and they can't wait. Yeah. So we use it. Yeah. And I think exactly. if it's used in a safe manner, um, it doesn't have any side effects. It's got all the positive things that you mentioned. Their vigor improves, their motivation improves. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and it's, it's helpful and it's anti-aging for them. Yeah, you know, we're using, we're using, I'm using testosterone and DHEA in virtually every cancer patient I see. Really? Amazing. Yeah. Because these guys, most of the patients that we see have been through sort of normal regimens. They've been through a chemotherapy regimen. They're very beat up, mm -hmm. you know? They're, they're very deficient in vitamins and minerals and amino acids. Right. They've been through you know, radiation or chemotherapy and they're sort of really beat up. Mm -hmm. And their testosterone levels and their DHEA levels are really low. And their quality of life must their be quality terrible. Of life is terrible. And I need them on. Mm -hmm. Like I need them to be able to you know, sit in a hyperbaric changer, chamber and get pulse magnetic field and get four hours of IVs every day if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna try to get them over Back. their their bad illness mm -hmm. and they got to have some vigor for that mm -hmm. yeah. and so um they're one of the tests we do can tell if the hormones are stimulative to the cancer mm -hmm. and except for very few number of cancers breast cancer uterine ovarian cancer some of those are are stimulated but most of the cancers that we see dhea is really good and progesterone is really good and testosterone is really good and i give it to them Wow. And we get them in reasonably good levels and they feel better. And then they've got more sort of oomph to handle their own mind Correct. about trying to get better mm -hmm. and their body too. So I think it's really important. And, and it's and, amazing because, you know, most people, they have that uh, myth, right? Oh, you know, if I do testosterone, it's going to cause cancer. You're actually mm -hmm. using it for cancer patients. Yeah. In cancer cardiac patients. patients. Yeah. You know, the, car the heart has the most testosterone receptors of any organ in the body. Wow. Okay. It's the it's the male muscle, mm -hmm. you know, organ. Yeah. You know, we get people in here who have who have congestive heart failure, or you know, they have ankle edema and they can't breathe and their 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 ejection fractions are low. Man, we give them testosterone. It helps them. Complete. You know, you give them testosterone. You give them peptides. You you know, you improve their nutrition. You give them amino acids, and they you know they yeah. they, they 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 come back up. Yeah. So it's 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 really important, really you know. So, so you Ideally, you just eat the right food, 
and you think the right thoughts and you'll be fine. Yeah. But I tell you, in today's environment, you're going to get killed with everybody else. <laughs> with everybody else. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. That, unfortunately. That's the you reality. Know, you know, yeah. That's the doom and gloom part of our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But the light part of our conversation is there's something we can do. About there's tools that's that right. we can use. You know, they, they, so, yeah, so I always yeah. like to leave a positive. I'm an right. optimist um, uh, in my deep core. So although I realize, man, we are doomed. But no, we can do something about it. That's right. And to me, very important, even going further than just the clinical, the more people hear us talking about this, I'm hoping that consumers can start voting with, with their, their wallets, yes. with yep. their money. Yep. You know what? Demand better from those companies. Don't buy the bad products. You know, we were talking about vegans a little bit. I'm going to go and we may get attacked on this one. But one of the pet peeves I have is the plant-based meat. If I'm going to be a vegan, I don't want to eat a fake burger and you look at the ingredients oh, my of all the oh, processed soy. foods that's soy. in there. Yeah. Come on. GMO. Phytoestrogens. Yeah. Like it, it so is GMO. much. So, so really, again, we're doing all this to, to really empower. Like To me, an empowered patient is the greatest patient. I don't like paternalistic type medicine anymore. But this is just take that. Don't ask me questions. See me in six months. We want our patients to know. That's why we do all of those that we're doing. And we send that to our patients. For them, when they go see their conventional doctors and they're just trying to do this, they're like, oh, but doc, what about my hormone levels? What about my, my exposure? So this is what this is about. So, yeah, so again, and, you know, just to kind of add a personal story and, and you know, to the, to the viewer, I think what Rudy, to echo what Rudy's saying is, you know, there's so many things that we can do. There's a lot of doom and gloom, but there's a lot of things that we can address and being active in all these areas and awareness and learning and, and seeing which one affects you more. Uh, one of the things that, and I, you know, I got to credit you for this, um, you, you saved me from a potentially life-threatening condition. Um, you know, I, I watched, we didn't say this in the beginning, but Dr. Minkoff was uh, prominently um, featured on the documentary of Root Cause, which talked about the toxicity of root canals and how important dental uh, hygiene really is, right? Um, and, you know, <laughs> I watched the documentary, I talked to you, and I remember I, I sent you a message, I'm like, hey, I have a root canal, do I really have to pull out my tooth? <laughs> and you looked at me and you said, yes, right? And I was like, my mother is not going to like you very much, right? So I took my time. I did my research and I went to almost every dentist that you can think of where I live, prominent dentists, um, and they all told me the same thing. Hey, Carlos, you should do this, you know, certain surgery, seal it up and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be taken care of. I found one guy, one dentist in the entire city. And the way that I went to him was because I looked him up. I actually was in, on one of Jay's groups. He, somebody texted a picture and it was a he was sitting in a dentist's office and they had your documentary on there. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is my dentist, right? At least he's in a line. So I went to see this guy. He did all the scanning that you can think of. And he's like, you know what? I do agree with Dr. M, you should pull it out, right? And I said, okay, all right, there's my answer, right? So I go, uh, I have the procedure and what, what was a, or what was to be a, just a standard extraction, right? Uh, became a really high risk operation because when he removed the tooth, the infection that I had, which was not picked up by any scan, right. had actually not only killed the tooth behind it, but it had also perforated my nasal cavity. Right? So think about that. And for the viewer, if I would have just sealed and taken care of the symptom, right? And not the root cause, address the root cause, right. this infection could have gone through my brain. Right. Maybe in one year, five years, who knows? Maybe I could have been standing there working. Normally, I would have been one of those guys that had a brain aneurysm from, you know, just the poison uh, into my brain. So thank you. My mom will not love you. <laughs> She'll have to but get over it. More things. Um, um, I want to focus on the one thing you just said, and I, I got so excited when you said it. Yeah. So you said, we wish everybody could eat good food, move enough, and think good thoughts. So one thing I've learned in conventional medicine, we don't pay enough attention to the mindset, to our thoughts, and the effect it has on our body. Psychology affect biology. So it's amazing to see that such a scientist like you um, talks like this. This is great. So it's not just... So to me, getting the perfect... Um, health involves eating the right foods, mm -hmm. avoiding exposure, making sure your, your hormones are balanced, 
making sure you're moving, you're exercising, and then what you said, making sure you think good thoughts, right? This is a part that as medical doctors, we tend to forget, as healers, we need to bring that back. So Amen. thank you for bringing that back. Amen. Yeah, and we're doing the same. Amen. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best. And we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.